on the breakfast show this morning. NLC holds protest in Imo in spite of court injunction against it. As people seek greener pastures abroad, there are those who fall victims of sex trafficking crimes and the syndicates that perpetrate it. What is it like surviving sex trafficking? That will be our second hot topic on the program this morning. And of course, we'll be looking at the headlines on some of our national dailies on Off the Press. A very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. It's always a pleasure knowing that you are there and uh, keeping us company as we hope to bring you things that will inform you, entertain you and uh, educate you. Well, right now, uh, we're going to uh, some of the stories that... Um, um, caught our fancy in the course of the last 24 hours. Apart from what is on the headlines, we're going to just look at this one. Some of them will still appear on the headlines. Paramilitary officers to be put on same salary level with police. That's according to the federal government. Uh, it has said that it's been in talks with Nigeria Salaries and Wages Commission to upgrade the salaries of paramilitary officers to be the same with the personnel of the Nigeria Police Force, NPF. Now, a statement signed by the Director of Press Ministry of Interior, Ajibola Afonja, on uh, Tuesday, October 31, quoted the Minister of Interior, Olubumi Tunjojo. He also said that, like the military, the federal government was considering the establishment of a pension board for personnel of the Nigerian Immigration Service, Federal Fire Service, Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, and the Nigeria Correctional Service. He said that the paramilitary personnel deserve an improvement in their salaries as well as pensions board due to the hazards involved in their duties. Tunjo Jo said he considers both unjust and detrimental to the morale of these critical public servants that they have significantly lower pay than their police counterparts. The paramilitary personnel who risk their lives daily are, in his eyes, deserving of a better financial recognition. I do hope that... Uh, uh, the civil servants and the politicians will start earning the same salary right now. Because at what, what level um, is a politician who is in the Senate or who is in the House of Representatives? Is it level 16? Is it level 20? Is it level 50? And whatever salary they're earning, shouldn't they have levels too, like the civil servants, so that they earn the same salary? I'm just asking a question as a novice. I don't know uh, how those things work. But hey... Uh, this is a welcome development to boost the morale, like he said, of the paramilitary. The second is that the senator representing Gombe North, Dr. Ibrahim Dankwambo, has urged the state governor, Mohamedou Yahya, to suspend the monthly pension and allowance of uh, 694,557 um, naira 82 cover accrued to him as a former governor. According to a letter dated October 4, 2023, uh, an address to Yaya Dankwambo, uh, he urged for a suspension of his pension and allowance following his new job as a senator. And then uh, he disclosed that the decision was following due consultation with relevant stakeholders, including civil society organizations, adding that it was sequel to his letter to Yaya on issues relating to security, allowance to governors. Um, the letter partly read, and I quote directly, um, further to my letter to His Excellency dated September 28, 2023 on issues relating to security allowance to governors as per approval dated 20 September 2002. Yours of 14th of uh, June 2019, an Executive Pension Act of 2007 as amended and other matters relating therein. Now, Dan Kombu added that uh, upon the termination of his tenure as governor, he has never benefited from perks accrued to former governors, adding that also uh, it should be noted that since he left in 2019, he has never benefited from any welfare packages, be it medical, furniture, transportation, etc. Okay, so that's uh, one of the issues that people have been talking about. I, I think Serap has gone uh, to the courts to make sure that the ex-governors stop uh, earning 
pensions and uh, whatever monies accrue to them as ex-governors as long, at least as long as they are in the Senate. You know that a lot of governors uh, retire to the Senate as it is. So uh, the Senate president is one of them and so many other people who were governors before. So it's morally not right, uh, and I, I think even constitutionally not right, for them to be receiving salaries or pensions or whatever monies accrue to them as ex-governors, and then still receive full salaries as ministers or as senators or as anything else that they have come to uh, be. Is it still the same federal government paying them, or is this still the same the government paying them, whether state or federal government? And uh, uh, Serap went to court and said, these people should stop uh, earning these salaries. Now, this one, out of his own volition, has said that it should be stopped. Even though we know that there may be some other allowances that accrue to the governors, that would be more than just the pensions uh, that was mentioned here, just above 500,000. Uh, but we know that this is a very good gesture if we wish that all of them could do the same thing and say, hey, stop until I'm done being a senator, you can return. Uh, but for now, do not pay all the entitlements. And he did say, and we're waiting for someone to dispute that fact, that since he left office in 2019, he has never benefited um, the perks of office or as ex-governor. So medically, transportation, everything, he has never benefited. So maybe other governors can do the same. Will you not survive if you say, state, hey, I am comfortable enough, especially now that I'm in the Senate or I'm a minister or something, uh, let me not be benefiting until I leave this new office. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how many people will follow suit. Now, EFCC arrests over 70 OAU students in midnight raid. We saw the story yesterday. Over 70 students of Obafemi Awolowo University, Ilefe, or Shun State, were reportedly arrested by officials of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission in a midnight raid on hostels outside the campus. Multiple sources in Ilefe confirmed to correspondents on Wednesday morning that the officials around 2 a.m. stormed the Fine Touch and Superb Hostels in Odudua Estate, Ilefe, broke into rooms and arrested the students. Reasons for the arrest have not been confirmed as of press time, uh, but the Students' Union President Abbas Ojo said the union had details of 72 students uh, picked up from the hostel with phones and cars taken away. A former union official, Joy Abiola, told newsmen that the students were beaten. Another student identified simply as Ewati said female students were among those picked up. Even some fresh students who just went to greet their senior colleagues were arrested. In a video shared with correspondents taken by one of the students, several young persons said to be students of the hostel were seen being marched into a white Hummer bus with some security officials hitting them and ordering them to move and enter quickly. Uh, we've also seen another report that uh, over 100 of these people will be prosecuted. Whatever their crime may be, um, they are bound to be other people who are very innocent among those people who are arrested. So if the same treatment is meted out to the people who are innocent, when they find out that they are innocent, uh, will there be a compensation of some sort or, so, or something? What are they even accused of? We do not know as at now. Um, a lot of them, the information flying around is that they were arrested because of fraud-related issues. Let's see how that case goes, uh, but um, we are watching. Now, another thing is that um, there's a story from River State, why we shot at Fubara, River's police say. Now, River State Police Command has explained how the attack on the state governor, Siminalai Fubara, during a protest at the state's House of Assembly complex in Port Harcourt on Monday occurred. The command described the attack as not deliberate, adding that the intention behind the water cannons and tear gassing was to disperse the protesters and to ensure the protection and safety of the governor from arsonists who were culpable of causing mayhem on the premises. In a statement by the spokesperson for the state's crim, uh, command, rather, Grace Iringe Koko, on Wednesday, uh, it said, let, let me just quote what it was, following the receipt of credible intelligence on the intention of some armed groups of persons to cause mayhem in Port Harcourt, the River State Capitol, particularly at the State House of Assembly on Monday, October 30, and recalling the previous case of arson on the State House of Assembly a day prior, 
which is currently being investigated. The Deputy Commissioner of Police in charge of operations immediately deployed armed police operatives, which he personally supervised, in order to intercept the hoodlums and ensure the protection of lives and properties within the State House of Assembly facility and its environs. The police maintained that the presence of the governor at the scene was of great surprise and shock as there was no prior communication to the police on the visit of the governor to the scene, which ordinarily is the usual protocol and complimentary uh, that uh, they accompany his guard for proper safety considering the intelligence of security threat at hand at that time. Okay, so they've given the explanation. Uh, well, it, it's it kind of solid, uh, but we don't know um, the two sides of the story in full. All we know is that the governor said he was pelted, the governor said he was shot at, and uh, the police are saying that they were, um, they were trying to protect the governor by doing that. So by, by, by shooting uh, water cannons at the governor, they were protecting the governor. Uh, we've also heard that that was the same kind of protection they were giving Joe Ajayro, uh, the NLC president in Imo State. And we've seen pictures of Joe Ajayro being protected, you know, with a swollen face. So I don't know how protection gives you a swollen face. Uh, Nigerians are yet to find out uh, what really happened. NLC, on one hand, is saying that he was assaulted. Um, he was abducted, uh, all kinds of uh, adjectives that they're using to describe how he was taken from the Secretariat to wherever else they took him. As that now, we hear reports that he's been taken to hospital, in fact, uh, more than one hospital, from one hospital to the other, and he's being treated for the co uh, protective custody that the police gave him. It's um, kind of funny, uh, but not funny. So we're going to hopefully get a, an L NLC chieftain to talk about that in a moment. We are hoping we can still connect with him uh, as we're having some uh, problems connecting with his particular line uh, this morning. But we hope to get him. Now, court stops Fubara's removal uh, is a follow-up to that uh, uh, story. PDP Governor's Consult Wiki is River State High Court sitting in Isiopo on Wednesday issued an interim order restraining the River State House of Assembly from proceeding with the planned impeachment of Governor Seminalaye Fubara. The court restrained the Speaker of the House, Martin Amaule, Deputy Speaker Dumle Mao, the Clerk of the House, and the State Chief Judge, Justice Simeon Chibuza Amadi. Justice O. Ben White issued the restraining order after Fubara's lawyer, Damian Okoro, urged, argued before him an ex parte application. All right, so. Uh, we hope that there will be peace in um, River State. We've heard uh, the governor is saying that um, it may just be um, a quarrel between father and son. That means he has acknowledged the fact that he may be a son to a weak a, a political godfather. And weak is talking tough even after the governors met with him. And he said, nobody can intimidate me. Uh, you know, and the structures in River State must not be dismantled, which means... I, I still don't know the definition of structures when they talk about structures. If you are a politician, you are part of the structures, you get whatever you're getting because the structure has given you this. Why try to control it? Why can't the structure just, you know, survive without you trying to control everybody? And we've always seen in River State one governor handing over to, the, to his boy and the boy uh, becoming what we call Ton Tiger. In the, in the streets of Nigeria. So we don't know why that is always the case in River State. But uh, Amechi retired his own godfathers. Wike retired Amechi and the other godfathers. Now Fubara has come, maybe trying also to retire Amechi, uh, uh, Wike, sorry. So why is there so much uh, problems? Why not just learn that this is what we do? I did it and someone else is doing it to me. Let's see how it is going to end. Um, the River State government has a very big coffer. They have a very big arsenal, a war arsenal. So let's see how it is. It's a very rich state. So maybe that's why there's always a problem like this. But we wait to see what happens for the benefit of people of River State and the South South and even Nigeria as a whole. Now, protesters storm National Assembly demand defense minister sacking. This one took me a little bit uh, surprised. 
uh, scores of pro-democracy activists on Wednesday marched to the National Assembly in Abuja to demand the sacking of the Minister of Defense, Belo Matawale. The protesters at the complex chanted solidarity songs and displayed banners with different inscriptions such as, Sack Belo Matawale now and our defense budget not in safe hands, among others. And um, the activists also, under the aegis of the Civil Society Advocacy Group for Accountability and Poverty, also accused the minister of allegedly romancing bandits responsible for the loss of lives and property worth billions of naira in the northern part of the country. Addressing newsmen in front of the National Assembly, leader of the group, Den Danesi Momo, called on the Senate President, Godswill Okpabio, to exert pressure on the president to ensure Matawale is relieved of his job. Now, if the accusation is true, we, I'm not saying it is true, but if the accusation is true, then what, did the, what is the DSS doing? Uh, what is the EFCC doing? What is the ICPC doing? Uh, where did they get their own intelligence that uh, shows them that his, uh, the Minister for Defense has been romancing with bandits? If this is true, why could the DSS not find it out, or have they been com compromised as well? Uh, let's see how the details will come out and what will, be, what will happen in the coming days. At least the president has said it doesn't matter who has been selected now, but it will matter if whoever has been selected does not perform on the job. Everybody liked that statement. If you do not do well, you will be sacked. So, whether someone has romanced with the, the bandits or not, let's see how he can deliver uh, and make Nigeria more secure than it used to be before he came into office. If he doesn't perform and is found romancing with the terrorists and all that, then we already know that the president will sack him without anybody having to protest. So let's wait and see what comes out of it. Uh, well, I still say thank you to you for tuning up on to um, Plus TV Africa and watching the breakfast show this morning. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Do not forget that. And we'll take a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at the papers and see what the headlines are. Stay with us.